How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. We have a bit of news for you from documents that were exposed outlining Microsoft's desires to purchase even more companies. Some of them we kind of knew about, some of them have been there, others the rumors have been fluctuating left, right, and center. So it's interesting to go through those as well. But before I dive into that, I just wanted to say a massive thank you. We did hit that 1000 magic number. I applied for YouTube partnership. And as of earlier this morning, I got in. It was officially confirmed. Usually it takes about 30 days, but it took like two, three days to actually uh, get that. I think it's about two days or a day, something like that. And yeah. YouTube partnership is officially confirmed. They have enabled me to also activate my YouTube membership, which I'll be working on to provide you a lot with a better service, especially uh, for those that want to support me further. So do keep an eye on that over the coming week or so as I try to get that set up. But honestly, simply watching the content, reading your comments is enough for me i'm extremely grateful so thank you so much for your continued support and i hope that you'll not only just enjoy the activision blizzard content that i do but also check out the other content that i've got yeah you know, sp sprinkled around <laughs> as i'm trying to filter in more content uh, as i look to uh make this channel just not just about abk but gaming news in general so now on with the actual video. So it seems a lot of people are pretty much on edge when it comes to the ABK deal, especially if you're a PlayStation fan. All I said online was Jim Ryan would love to see Xbox shut down. There's that email that went around apparently from, uh, was it Matt Booty saying that he or Peter Hines, and we've got the email anyway, that says that he wants to see PlayStation shut down. And it's my opinion, right? As a, well, I wouldn't say I'm a complete neutral, but as someone who owns all consoles, and honestly, my primary console is the PS5. Um, and I use my Xbox primarily for Game Pass. If I'm a business and I want to, and I mean, and I have a competition with another rival, I want them gone because I want their customers. This is basic stuff, right? Why is this so difficult to understand? So when I turned around and said, Jim Ryan wants, you know, Xbox gone, of course he does. If you ask him behind closed doors, that would be like a wet dream for him. Now then I said, Microsoft doesn't want PlayStation gone because as far as Microsoft's concerned, they want to get bigger. They want to acquire more. And by doing that, if they keep PlayStation there and they're still competing with PlayStation and PlayStation has their dominance, they can use that as a smokescreen to get bigger while they chip away at Sony's market share. Ultimately, they both want the same thing. Just Microsoft is going about it a different way. Does Microsoft want to get them out of business? You can bet your two bucks they do. But will they... Do it in the same way that Sony wants to do it? No, 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 no. On face value, they want Sony to stay. They want Sony to be strong, so it gives them more reason and more buying power to buy more companies. But this concept, this thought process, is somehow alien to a lot of people. And it's, it's a little depressing. But it is Twitter after all, right? <laughs> I shouldn't expect anything more from Twitter. But anyway with that out the way let's get into the actual video because that was enough toxicity to last me a week right so we come over here so this is the first slide that i want to look at xbox wanted to buy bungie sega and io interactive after bethesda now there's a lot of stuff to break down here and i am going to get into it but let me just read this bit here internal emails reveal that microsoft wasn't planning to settle with acquiring the developers of skyrim starfield doom wolfenstein indiana jones and more in 2020 now this is correct right now we've known i mean let's face it right let's be realistic the rumors about say uh xbox buying sega have been circulating for ages and at some point people were even convinced that it was 100% happening and it didn't. 
So it's not like these rumors were just fabricated or they just came out of nowhere. These must have been leaked somewhere. This must have come out from somewhere. In order for it to have materialized, people aren't just gonna randomly go and be almost 100% sure that they're going to buy Sega. Now the IO Interactive is kind of interesting because there was a Project Dragon that was being developed and it was being, it was a project between Microsoft and IO Interactive and I believe it was an exclusive but we never really heard anything about it. It was early development. So Microsoft trying to kind of swoop in and pick them up kind of makes sense, right? Especially since they're an independent studio and since they are making the game exclusive for Xbox, it is exactly what their competitors do. If the company makes an exclusive game, they kind of want to pick them up so they can continually make exclusive games. Now, the one with Bungie is the most interesting, I find, because this one is actually kind of shrouded in mystery. Now, I've read reports where Bungie approached Microsoft to actually rebuy them, and Microsoft said no, they didn't want to get back into that bed. Subsequently, then Bungie went over to Sony and offered their services to, Bun to Sony and Sony picked them up for 3.6 billion. But recently Bungie came out saying that that is not the case. They never offered themselves to Microsoft. Now, this declaration comes after they're owned now by Sony. It would kind of be weird if they came out and said, yeah, we went to Microsoft first. We offered our services to them. We wanted them to buy us again. We wanted to kind of rekindle that relationship. But when they said no and rejected us, we kind of went to a, you know, Sony as a second option, you know, as a runner up. They're never going to say that. They're never in a million years going to say that. They're not going to undermine their parent company, right? Um, so it's really interesting to, you know, to understand where. Bungie act where the Bungie information actually lies. Is it true? Is it not? I, I genuinely don't know. It, it's one of those weird ones where I don't think we'll ever know outside of those people internally. But do I think Bungie would have been happy to go back to Microsoft after the way they split? Probably not. So before I get into this one here, I want to actually cover the email. So this is the one from Matt Booty, the one that went around legendarily. Now this one says, thanks for sharing a lot to digest here. We'll read it in detail. A different view to the general view below might be that we, Microsoft, are in a very unique position to be able to go spend Sony out of business. And there's that word, Sony out of business, right? Now, what they mean by this is through monetary, basically buying exclusives, buying companies to get them out of business. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, which is why I wanted to add that bit in there and why people are really misunderstanding the whole point of what I was saying, every business wants to have a utopia where they have all the customers. Sony is no different. Microsoft definitely is no different. It's like their dream. If you turn around today and asked Apple, would you, if you could do a Thanos snap and make Google disappear with their phones and Play Store and everything, would you do it? They'd do that Thanos snap before you finished your sentence. If you went to Amazon and asked them if they'd like to get rid of Google or Microsoft, they would do the final snap before you finished your sentence because they want that dominance marketplace. It's normal. Why people get upset with it is beyond me. But when I turned around and said, Microsoft have an ulterior motive as to why they want Sony to be here, all they hear is Sony, Microsoft, they don't want them doesn't want uh, Sony to go out of business. No, no, no. They very well much do want them to go out of business. They want their customers, but they've just got a different approach to we're going to use the guillotine. Instead, they're going to smoke them to death, <laughs> right? If we think that video game content matters in 10 years, we might look back and say, totally would have been worth it to lose two, three billion in 2020. That's a lot of money to lose to avoid a situation where Tencent, Google, Amazon, or even Sony have become the Disney of games and own most of the valuable content. You see where I'm going with this, right? 
They're all in competition and they all want to eradicate each other. For example, it is, it is practically impossible for anyone to start a new video streaming service at scale at this point. And that is correct. With Netflix, Disney, Hulu, all of them out there, for someone to come along and start a new streaming service, how successful are they going to be? The, the, the competitiveness of that market is completely bleak. This is where the FTC and the CMA and all the regulators should be focusing their effort because it is completely anti-competitive. You know, there is no room for anyone to come into that market to, you know, start something new from fresh. It's, it's, it's the, the uphill struggle is so steep that it's just not even worth starting. What content do you base it on? Things like Hulu and CBS All Access will be trivial plays in the space. In games, Google is three to four years away from being able to have a studio up and running. And I believe that was them referring to Stadia potentially. Uh, Amazon has shown no ability to execute on game content. This is because their uh, Crucible game and a couple of others before then just continuously failed, and they just but they were they were bleeding money like crazy. I think they had lost over five hundred million at one point and had nothing to show for it. Content is the one moat that we have in terms of a catalog that runs on current devices and capability to create new. Sony is really the only other player who could compete with Game Pass, and we have a two year and 10 million subs lead. So that is where this whole spend Sony out of business comes from. They're referring to Game Pass. They're referring to Game Pass and by promoting Game Pass and by putting uh, exclusive games on there, putting day and date games on there. And as we'll see here, if we reverse the course on day and date, because they knew day and date is going to lose them a lot of money, right? They're going to lose a lot of money. And as you can see here, this two, three billion dollars that they're saying they're going to lose, that is taken into consideration. This is where that stems from. That day and date is going to lose them a metric ton of money. It's going to be hard to convince folks that things like Mixer or xCloud have much of a chance of surviving scrutiny either. So what they're saying here is Game Pass is unique. It's not entering the market of Hulu, Netflix, CBS, uh, All Access, you know, Disney Plus or anything like that. But it's offering the same service, but in a different market. And we already have the advantage of being one of the first into that market. We've got an infrastructure set up. We've got the games to back it up. We can actually do this, but it will cost us quite a bit up front. So we're looking at the long game, 10 years, 15 years down the line, where we will grow this to become extremely profitable. And by doing that and having games day and date, by having third party games day and date, they can spend Sony out of business. And by that, what they refer to is if you as a consumer don't care about owning your games, don't care about the physicals, and all you care about is actually playing games, and you're the type of person that will play the game once and never pick it up again, Game Pass is perfect for you. Now, would you go spend £70 on a game that you can just buy and it will sit there and then you'll go trade it in for 30 quid, Or will you pay £10 a month and have access to 400 games with day and date, with third party day and date, and then just enjoy the game and move on? That is basically what they were referring to. And by enticing people to Game Pass, they're essentially moving them away from Sony's pl platform, which is, you know, how it works. That's not anti-competitive. That's just how it works. That's business. Now, this one over here is really interesting because this one's actually talking about Sega. Now, a lot of this has actually been leaking. I find it quite, well, not leaking, has been exposed and revealed. And I think it's, you know, a lot of this should have actually been redacted. I think this is quite pertinent, like uh, personal information, right? I don't understand why uh, Microsoft actually allowed all this information to come out. If I was them and Sony and anyone else that's involved in this uh, case trial, I would have probably redacted everything. I'm not just saying this for Microsoft. I'm saying this for Sony as well. You know, these sorts of deals, this sort of information, it could could cause quite a bit of damage.
But as you can see here, Phil Spencer sent this to Amy Heard, Sacha Nadella, and then CC'd a bunch of people. It was a request to buy Sega. Now, we've already known that Sega has been around on people's thoughts, minds, rumors for a long time. And he goes, I am writing to request strategy approval to approach Sega Sammy regarding a potential acquisition of their Sega gaming studios. Now, for those of you who don't know, Sega Sammy is the actual full name. That was because they used to be an arcade studio and all they used to do was arcade and they then went into home entertainment but sega semi kind of stayed so uh even though we refer to them today as sega that is their officially uh official business name for context bill and i have reviewed the business case for acquiring sega and are both supportive we believe that sega has built a well-balanced portfolio of games across segments with global geographical appeal and will help us accelerate xbox game pass both on and off console now this is really important because one of the things that xbox struggles to do right now is gain any foot in the japanese market right They've, they've got almost no foot in there. You can see this with all their DP, you know, all the Twitter DPDs and stuff where they don't sell any consoles or anything. Um, they've just got, I think they've got like a 2% market share there. It's, it's almost non existent. So by having someone like Sega there, uh, you know, a home known company, a Japanese company staple who makes like awesome games like Yakuza, having that under your belt, that could help you promote your brand in Japan. So this to me would have actually been a really, really good purchase for Xbox, but obviously it hasn't materialized. It goes on to say, please find the attached memo and bullets below for additional detail on our strategy to prioritize our next acquisition target, a brief overview of Sega's gaming portfolio and the value drivers for the potential acquisition. As the Sega Sammy Studios are owned by Sega Sammy, a publicly traded Japanese company, we have called out a few deal complexities in the memo. Sega's gaming has represented roughly half of Sega Sammy's revenue and operating income, or $900 million of revenue and 60 to 90 million of operating income, in which of Sega Sammy's last three fiscal years, the team is coordinating closely with CELA on next steps if we were to receive SA. Sign up. Please let us know if you are if you have any questions or concerns or would like us to schedule time to discuss live. And then you've got the prioritizing acquisition targets. To help inform our next strategic acquisition target, we have identified top priority segment and geographic combinations for Xbox in order. PC in North America and Europe, obviously that's really important because Sega is a massive uh, company. That, you know, they're a big company that loves to port their games to PC. They port them to consoles, but they also port them to PC because they want as wide berth of you know access as possible. Mobile in North America and Europe, Sega has tons of games in the mobile industry. And as you know, Microsoft really wanted to be in the mobile gaming sphere. So you can see even from 2020, mobile has been at the forefront of all of their decisions. And it's not just a one hit wonder or basically bullshit when it comes to Activision. King is their primary target. Console and PC in APAC. Now, as you can see, they, they, they want to be relevant, not just in the Western part of the world, but in the Eastern side of the world as well. Keeping in mind these leading priorities, we evaluated a set of targets, both individually and in combination of our own studios to determine the best strategic fit. Sega is the most attractive next acquisition target due to its global PC catalog, presence on mobile in Asia, and global branding affinity on console through its classic IP. I mean, this purchase would have been ideal for them. It would have highlighted everything. I mean, it would have basically highlighted everything and been like the cherry on the top. It would have given them everything they wanted. Mobile gaming in Asia, mobile gaming in Europe, they would have had a better foothold in Japan to be able to grow over there. They would have had a wider reach in having games on PC, which would have meant PC Game Pass would have actually become even more valuable. So as you can see, there's a lot that could have gained here. So those rumors that were floating around about Xbox, you know, wanting to buy Sega, 
I know Bungie was there and IO Interactive is definitely there because we know that they're still working on the Project Dragon. But to me, Sega would have been the best one for them to actually go for. Whether they will actually still go for it after Activision and Blizzard, if that actually goes through or not, is unknown. After all, Activision and Blizzard is a $67.8 billion acquisition. Sega's probably going to be like, what, maybe one 2 billion at most it's, it's a lot less and being under 5 billion means that it doesn't even have to go through regulators in the same way that it normally would have to if it's something that's over 5 billion dollars or is it 3 billion dollars but either way i think sega would actually go for less than the actual requirement for scrutiny so it would actually be easier for it to actually go through but i think that would be like a really really good purchase for them but it'll be interesting to see if they actually decide to go for that considering what trouble that's come with ABK. But yeah, I thought it was really interesting with this. I think uh, it was worth having a chat about it. And one thing I will say, if you are on social media, just be careful what you say, because there are a lot of crazies out there who are not interested in any form of logic, are not interested in anything you have to say. You say something wrong about their plastic console, their plastic box and they will lose their freaking mind but again that's it that's the video thank you so much for your continued support i really do appreciate everything you all have done the ftc trial well i guess it's tuesday today is going to be today we're going to have a bunch of speakers on there sachin adela isn't available isn't going to be on uh stand today he's going to be uh, uh, Jim Ryan is actually going to be there via video and a couple of others will be there by video. How much of that will actually be available to the public? I don't know. I'm going to try and get us uh, into the actual court case again. So, uh, positions are extremely limited. So it's, it's first come first serve and hopefully I can make it in. I've managed to just about get in the second time. Hopefully we can. Otherwise, if we cannot, then like I said, uh, Florian Mueller does a fantastic tweet by tweet uh, explanation of what goes on. We can, I'll basically summarize what's going on through there. But that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Remain legend. <laughs>